So first of all, uh, we are going to welcome Ruth Trinder, who is Associate Professor um, in the Department of English, Business and Communications in the University of Business and Technology. Uh, that's a long title, that's a long word. Uh, so first of all, I apologize for using boring old PowerPoint. I also apologize for the colors, but that's corporate design. And yeah, in a way, I apologize for the long title, for the long title. Um, what I was basically interested in is, um, where teachers are pretty much aware of potential of technology, what technology can help the language learning. And I was interested in what students, for a student's view on learning opportunities presented, offered by a new media by technology. And that's within a very particular learning context. Um, we offer language courses, business English courses, uh, at a business university. So we're the language department at a business university, and English is foreign language course. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about is some of the promises which will be familiar to you of new media and um, a bit of background, the realities and <coughs> our program at Sarabiana University of Economics. Um, I'll explain why we adopted a kind of blended learning approach for our business English courses, uh, what the reasons behind that were. Uh, and um, I'll tell you about two studies I conducted. Uh, one was about students' perceptions, uh, students' views, and the actual use of e learning in a blended learning context. The rule is we offer face to face classes, but we also offer e learning component that reflects the material that's supposed to be used parallel to the courses. classes. And the second study is um, about independent learning, about after class learning, how students use the potential of social media or social network sites of you know, new media for language learning, what are the thoughts um, this, these media have the potential of improving their English, of improving their community competence and so on. Okay, so I divided promises into two different um, sources, uh, on the one hand uh, access to material resources, on the other hand access to social resources to students. Obviously you are familiar with that, um, one of the advantages of technology is um, technology offers any time and any place and any pace access to masses and masses and masses of input material. Whether it's authentic materials or whether it has already been adapted for language purposes, uh, with exercises, with dictionaries, um, containers, translations, etc. Okay, so obviously useful for reading because there can be annotations, dictionary glossaries useful for listening and watching uh, on mobile devices, on uh, netbooks, uh, notebooks, etc. Uh, can be used for writing, for publishing, we all know about movies and books, etc. And uh, offers access to corporate, to concordances, so students can brush up on their vocabulary, on their qualifications, etc. Um, social resources, people. Obviously, access to any amount of native speakers and non-native speakers, possibility to interact, to interact orally or to interact in written form, to cooperate with people, to socialize with people. We heard very much about that in uh, the opening plenary today, um, and on social media, social networking sites such as uh, Facebook. Obviously, all four skills could be practiced. I'm just noticing I use Facebook time for Okay, what are the realities of, of our um, business English program? Um, some constraints we have to face, we have to deal with, uh, are on the one hand very large class sizes. Uh, that means 70 to 90 students in the first semester, in the first language course. <coughs> 
uh, no mandatory attendance. That means if students choose to, they can just use the electronic resources, not come to the face-to-face teacher-led traditional classes. The follow-up course is easy two, three, four, smaller, 25 to 30, up to 40 students. Um, something else which sort of bogs us as teachers is very much a standardized program. So what we have to teach and what is going to be tested, we have not much say in that. Yeah, that's standardized. <coughs> there are lots of parallel courses. Yeah, the university is very much a mass university, I have to say. So we have lots and lots and lots of students and lots of standardized parallel courses. Um, our student population is very heterogeneous. Um, Austria, small countries surrounded by lots of other countries. So we have lots of uh, students with other backgrounds, with other nationalities, other mother tongues, and very much different levels of English and different schooling experiences. What we teach is very much business, very much content, technology, uh, and due to the large class sizes, uh, very much the focus on receptive skills meaning reading comprehension, vocabulary, quotations, business terms, in a formal register. And what students resent uh, in their feedback is that general English, by necessity, is neglected because we have a limited number of classes, we have our program which we have to go through. So there is too little opportunity really for speaking, for oral interaction, and that's something students don't like something that they visit teachers as well to be honest. Okay, so we uh, created an e-learning resource, an uh, online support for the courses, tailor-made for these particular English business communication courses because there was obviously a need for individualized practice. Uh, e-materials have been designed to, to go parallel to the classes, the complement, the supplementary classes, uh, same topics, business topics are dealt with uh, in the form of language tasks, content tasks, terminology tasks. There's also very extensive uh, grammar reference section and glossary section which students can use independently as and when needs arise. In the best case, I would say um, this, this kind of your approach, your blended learning approach can foster, can promote independent learnings because students up to a point can choose what path to the goal, can choose whether they rely more on the face-to-face -face classes, on the traditional classes, or whether they rely more on, on the e-learning materials they have available. Okay, so I conducted a number of studies really that dealt with questions of what did students expect of the e-learning, of the blended learning approach, of the classes, uh, what did they get out of it, what did they use, which component for. Um, and I subdivided the expectations and functions into three areas. On the one hand, linguistic or content, business English. What students wanted from classes was, by the teacher, a global introduction to what for many was a new topic, a new area. Uh, they also wanted to practice some listening because at least the teacher was speaking to them and hopefully also some speaking and uh, of course some interactive exercises as well, but uh, in a very limited way. Um, classes also provided social function because uh, students wanted to keep in touch with their fellow students our language classes might seem large, but they're still small compared to some of the content classes where there are you know, 200 to 500 students in, in the first part of the studies. Students also want to use the classes to, to compare their level of English, their competence, etc., to others. So it's a way of comparing oneself and competing with their fellow students. Uh, classes also have a strategic function, they provide regularity, they provide structure, and students also hope to get some exam hints from teachers, build up a relationship with their teachers. As far as e-learning is concerned, um, the linguistic uh, functions were 
in, in contrast to the class, is much more detailed, focused learning, checking of understanding, practicing, self-testing. Some social aspects as well, because uh, the forum provided opportunity for students of all the year to interact with each other, to ask questions, to get answers. And finally, strategic, very much exam-oriented studying, swapping of hints, tips by the forum. Um, the data showed that students very rarely used um, the e-learning materials regularly parallel to the classes. Um, what were reasons for that? Um, first of all, teacher dependence. Students thinking of teacher knows best, and if I go to classes, listen to the teacher, I will learn more. Uh, and maybe lack of endorsement by the teachers. Inexperience in self-directed learning, overconfidence. Um, many students think, okay, my English is good anyway, I was good at school, so I'll be good at business English. So no self-assessed need for further practice. Then we are all familiar with that um, reliance on just in time studying, cramming for the exam rather than uh, throughout the semester. And something I'll go into uh, a bit later on, learning beliefs. Learning beliefs about how languages are learned, should be learned, are best learned. Okay, some examples of uh, positive factors. Uh, students mentioned uh, what they liked, what they appreciated about uh, e-learning. First of all, choice of time, place and speed. Uh, always put some comments next to next to that. So somebody said, "What I liked about e-learning, you can do the tasks and learn whenever you have time and you know, with a tempo that suits you best." Individualized, individualized practice. Great advantage. You can study at any point of need. Concentrate on special topics. Immediacy. Expense the right answers. Monitoring. Consolidating knowledge. Helps me understand what we've learned in class, reinforce my knowledge, prepare for exams. And positive factors, which means next they're going to be negative factors. Uh, as mentioned before, learner believes. Somebody said, and that comment really sums up what many students think. I didn't use it because that's not how languages are learned, as simple as that. Very much related to that is believing the importance of oral interaction, of speaking, of listening. In English, I don't like it because, in my opinion, discussing in groups or just speaking with other people is much better. And then finally, um, e-learning uh, is not just used for English; it's used in all of uh, in all the courses of the first part of the studies. So there was too much use of e-learning in general. I don't really like working with computers all the time. <coughs> hey, so influences in the use of online <coughs> materials, of the e-learning materials. On the one hand, contextual factors, endorsement by opinion leaders, endorsement by teachers, endorsement by peers, fellow students saying, oh, it's quite good, use it, or it's no good at all, don't use it. Uh, external structure, whether the materials were in any way tied in with the classes, whether teachers <coughs> did homework, which had to be handed in from the e materials, whether there was a midterm test or not. And then something which, again, was the assessment of students, how relevant for the exam were the materials, how well did students feel prepared by the materials for the exam. So these were contextual factors, maybe more important learner factors. Um, mentioned before, perceived need. Do we really need to practice more or do I already understand what it's about, what the course is about? Capacity for self-regulated learning, for doing something outside class, in time, for knowing one's weaknesses. And finally, in bold, because I think that's, that's really a crucial <coughs> factor, learner beliefs about how language is learned, learning styles, and the goals, the main goals of students. I've sort of summed up here um, students' goals in this particular learning context. 
aims obviously are study related and that <coughs> means mainly <coughs> sorry, means mainly passing the exams which are quite hard in the eyes of the students and some of the teachers uh, getting through the program as efficiently as possible but then of course also job related goals business university so students think they're going to be working in business presenting, negotiating, representing the firm in foreign contexts, maybe working for multinational companies where the corporate language is English. So they think they need to be, first of all, fluent in spoken English, in oral English. And in their eyes, the main elements of fluency of good English is having a vast amount of vocabulary and having a very good, a very credible pronunciation. And the language learning beliefs are that you learn best by immersing yourself in the culture, obviously, and by speaking, by imitating others. And here in this context, they very much believe that native speakers are far superior as models. They also believe that all the corrections help. Some students even say, well, that's the point of classes. I go to classes because teachers can correct me. Non-natives are not good enough to correct me. I'm not in a position to correct me. So non-native speakers, not good, inferior as communication partners or as models. Uh, so really to sum up for them, the benchmark of good English is good, excellent, communicative, oral competence. And that might be typical for this cohort of students, business students in Vienna, who know they're going to use English mainly as a lingua franca, but they still want this brilliant pronunciation and also correct English. Okay, uh, since, let me just go back here, uh, the communicative oral competence can't be easily acquired in our classes due to what I mentioned before, the large class sizes, etc. Uh, I wanted to know how students acted outside class, if they used the new media, social media, etc. for language learning purposes, if they for themselves independently access, well obviously they access Facebook and so on, but how they estimated the potential of these communication possibilities, uh, how they assessed them for language learning. So what did students do outside class to use English and maybe even to improve English? They used material resources, they used old media, books, films, SAT, TV, English textbooks for other courses, uh, they read a lot online, or they read a lot online, they access newspapers, blogs, journals, etc. And uh, online listening and watching on their mobile devices, on their uh, notebooks, netbooks, etc. American sitcoms, TV shows, etc. were men mentioned a lot. And then I think it's quite interesting that uh, as far as social resources, access to native and non-native speakers is concerned. Uh, I mentioned before, native speakers are superior and face-to-face -face communication is superior in the eyes of these students. So new, new media are rarely used by these students for oral communication. They are often used with non-natives and therefore, in the eyes of these students, they are okay for keeping in touch, for keeping up with friends abroad, but they are not seen as a learning, or a learning opportunity and they are not seen as a practice opportunity. They are not there to learn English, to improve English, <coughs> to communicate and thus to, to yeah, improve. Okay, so my conclusion is that the promises, which we've also seen in, in the plenary uh, opening stage, obviously, <coughs> promises there are in the new media are not realized uh, by our students. Um, I blame Facebook for many things, 
and also for that. Because I think in a way these social networks and social media uh, tend to replace one-to-one -one also electronic communication. So instead of using email, instead of using Skype, most students are on Facebook and keep in touch that way. Which of course changes the nature of communication, the way people speak to each other, the way they interact, and the way it trivial trivializes uh, communication interaction. Uh, so the value of written communication and communication with non-natives is underestimated by many. And uh, the learning opportunities, independent learning opportunities offered by any form of computer media communication such as mail and voice chats, etc. is overlooked by many students. Final quote Somebody said, I'm convinced that speaking would be much more helpful to improve your language skills than simply writing emails or communicating things. So that's the status quo. Uh, students do not use um, these wonderful new media uh, in a way that realizes their potential. So, I would say, as a final comment, it's, it's probably up to teachers again to set up exchanges, set up writing exchanges in a more controlled way in order to benefit from what is there in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Two things. One is there's been some work done on um, kind of learning, um, kind of invading personal spaces, and I think um, you know, like you, you know, if, if I study in the library, I will study in the bar. So similarly, if I use Facebook for my personal and social interactions, I don't want you to try and put learning into it, because that's not what Facebook is for in, in students' head. So I think there's a lot of, of, of that in, in what you're seeing, is that this is not my learning space. Um, so, so I was wondering, and you mentioned that students accept um, the use of um, technology called social media, whatever, uh, in, in, accept integrating into their learning if um, their peers are doing it, the leader is um, recommending it. So, what do you do to change those kind of views? To, you know, but before they arrive at those conclusions, you know, at the beginning of the course, do you do any kind of activity to say, here's some examples of what people have done before, or look, um, in this other class they did this and it was really cool, or you know, do, you, do you try to preempt that so that they can see that example? Um, okay, can I just first answer the first part of your question when you said uh, private space, etc. On the other, on the other hand, students say that just going to a bar and talking to somebody from England, etc., is a wonderful learning opportunity. Mm. That's where they learn, and that's also a private space, and that's not the official learning space. Yeah, so I appreciate you saying, okay, Facebook is something private and is has a different function for them, yeah. But what I'm saying is it could be used in other mm. ways. Oh, I agree completely, but okay. what do you do to let them see that? This is still the question, what is to be done about it, yeah? And I, I think in, in our particular case, yeah, what I've been reporting on is students' independent use of these, the students' use of of uh, new media as a completely independent learning opportunity. We just offer our core resource, we just offer the e-learning resources which go together with the courses. And we say really that's all we have time for. Yeah? Time is very much limited, you know, content mm -hmm. hours get cut all the time, etc. etc. Bachelor program. Okay, so we say well, we have to say students also have to go outside and learn study independently. We haven't got time to teach them how to socialize. 
Yeah? So that's their responsibility. And some students see that. Some students say, okay, it's the responsibility of the university to teach us business English, our responsibility to go and find native speakers to talk to. Sorry, I'd like to know more about your data collection method. Um, can you elaborate on how you collected data on the beliefs of the students, uh, their expectations, and you said something about feedback? Yeah, that, that was, that's really the outcome of a number of studies I've conducted. I was involved in the development of the e-learning component, and so obviously straight from the beginning I wanted to know what students have thought of it, how they used it, how often they used it, and so on. Student beliefs, uh, that's a later study I conducted. Yeah, so this is really the outcome, a compilation of a number of surveys. And the surveys were in part quantitative, uh, saying how often did you use it, blah, 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 and in part qualitative, why did you use it, what do you expect, and also student interviews. So it was basically surveys? Basically surveys, okay. yeah. Um, to go back to the, the social and seeking out native speakers, can I just put in a little plea on behalf of um, native English speakers who have lived in some countries? I can remember being hounded everywhere I went. <laughs> <laughs> and I am horrified to think that that might happen on my social networks as well. So. <laughs> <laughs>